Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Sorry about the delay in videos recently. I was in Montreal broadcasting the NHL 2022 GWC. Congratulations again to Regs. But we've got our final event of NHL 22's Hockey Ultimate Team. So let's get into it, cover everything, because we got a lot of new sets and finally power up collectible trade in. All right, we're going to kick things off with the new Summer of Chell cards. I'm not going to lie, the card art is not very Chell like, but it actually is pretty sick. I'm not going to lie. I actually really enjoy it. And the new Devil's Gold. Goaltender, the 90 overall VTech Vanishek comes with gold post to post 72 aggression and only a 90 overall, so he's not going to do a lot of damage for you. But the Devil's trying to get an upgraded net because it's been absolutely abysmal for the last few seasons, and uh, they're going to take their shot on the Capitals backup. Only 25 years old, so not a bad trade. I mean, a little low risk, uh, maybe high reward. We'll see. Next up, we've got the 90 overall Reed Schaefer, a drafty from this past week. And I got to say, it was actually really fun to be in a attendance at the draft the first five picks was absolutely insane we'll talk about that maybe in a future video six foot three ninety overall and with third eye and elite edges no no skating the skating is at 99 or sorry 89 and slap shot is under 90 when it comes to accuracy so this is a, a fan if you're a fan of shape and a big one the 90 overall alexander romanov in a three-team trade that absolutely stunned everyone in attendance at the bell center as montreal moved on from alexander romanov in a three-team trade 92 speed 92 acceleration with gold shutdown ice back i'm not huge on at all but shutdown is still a pretty good one shot is going to be pretty weak as well but if you are a fan of montreal or the islanders alexander romanov is available for you then peter morazic the leafs trade out of the first round they move back i believe 10 spots uh and they trade morazic to chicago and i'm not gonna lie again leave your comments in the comment section down below i don't know what chicago was doing i get that they want to rebuild getting rid of DeBrinket and Doc, who we're going to talk about in a little bit I think and then the four first round picks in a what was deemed to be a little bit of a weaker draft but they still have Jones, Taves, and Kane and if you were completely rebuilding I feel like they should start with maybe their best players I think DeBrinket was probably better than Taves but still then trading for Morazic in what was essentially moving up I guess like eight spots I believe good move for Toronto getting out of the 3.5 million dollar contract there because they could not have that in a backup goalie role. Zach Cassian goes to the land of dead contracts. Goes to Arizona. He's going to be playing in the college barn. Uh, the card, obviously nothing special. It's six foot three, under 90 skating with big rig and close quarters. Uh, but man, again, Arizona, I think, had a pretty good draft. They do, they did what Arizona does. They lit, they're like the Oakland A's of the NHL. They basically might get good for maybe two seasons. They don't hit the cup or really get close. And then it's, ah, time to tear down and rebuild and it's just a shame but Zach Cassian going to Arizona then we've got Maverick Lemero six foot seven right-handed defenseman with 93 speed 93 acceleration is actually kind of usable in game and I'm not gonna lie if you haven't seen it one of the most weird clips I think we've ever seen after he gets drafted seriously go google his name it, it, ah, it's real weird Brad Lambert from the Pelicans he got drafted I'm actually pretty sad about this. The Sharks traded back in the first round. Uh, we'll talk about uh, even getting even more crushed by that in a little bit. But he got he fell all the way to the bottom of the first round. The Sharks had a, had an option to draft him. They took Philip Bisset instead, which I think was a bit of a reach. But nonetheless, uh, Brad Lambert's card not really anything that you can uh, uh, you know get away with here at this stage of the game. But if you're a fan, go ahead and grab. Billy Huso goes to the Red Wings, and if there's any Blues fans in the in the chat i've got to ask i mean i guess uh bennington maybe saved his not only his career but definitely his starting role here in st louis with this playoff run i gotta say though billy huso i think got them there this year and i think it was a really astute move by eiserman who can seem seemingly do no wrong uh to grab billy huso and definitely an upgrade net for the red wings the red wings i think are gonna be a lot like the la kings this year where all of their prospects are still coming up so there's a realm of possibility where they don't all hit but I think that they're good enough that they might actually challenge for a wild card spot, especially with how many teams are in flux this year. You've got the Penguins. Who knows about them? You've got the Islanders. They don't look to be any better. And then you've got, and then you've got the Bruins, who have really been a, a you know a very top heavy team, and they're out Brad Marchand for six months. So let me know what you think there. But I think that's uh, very odd to not move on from Biddington and keep Hugh. So I mean, obviously his playoff run was not all that good. Biddington got them into the second round, but. 
It just seems weird to me. Nathan Gosher uh, from the Quebec Ramparts. He got a huge pop uh, in the Bell Center, getting drafted a little bit later on, I believe, by the Anaheim Ducks. So they had a pretty decent draft, which sucks for me as a Sharks fan. But here we go. Magnetic and wheels. Again, skating and speed is all not that uh, not that usable at this stage. But I think that we're at a point now where don't take the meta. Don't use the stats. If you're a fan, take the take the card that you want to take. And if you're a Ducks fan or a Ramparts fan, there you go. The nation go Nathan Gosher. Joaquin Kamel fell quite a bit in the draft as well. That was kind of one of the more stunners that we saw is that when he started this season, he was one of the highest rated uh, draft picks. 94 speed, 95 acceleration. A very good card all the way around, to be honest with you. Uh, the 93, Joaquin Kamel. Tony D'Angelo goes to the Philadelphia Flyers uh, in a pretty odd move, I'm not going to lie. I can't wait to see how Tony D works with uh, with Torts. Uh, Philly, I mean, Tony D'Angelo is a very good hockey player, obviously. We'll see how he works with Torts. It'll just be interesting to see, um, you know, because the Flyers are just a very middle-of-the-ground team. Obviously, last year was horrible for them in, in terms of expectations. They made an entire entire roster shift and uh if you go back and do the trade chart with Ristolainen and and all that last year they gave up a lot for basically Tony D'Angelo and, and Ristolainen but Tony D'Angelo is definitely a very very good defenseman he's good at quarterback that power play then we've got Denton Matichuk 94 overall left-handed defenseman I believe another I believe it was a Chicago pick I think I'm mixing that up with the Blue Jackets I could be completely wrong the whole first round is a very big blur to me uh again being in attendance was way different than watching it on TV 94 speed 95 acceleration is actually a pretty solid card uh for the 94 overall left-handed defenseman a good shot uh good body decent body check at 90 overall and then perfect defensive awareness stats all right connor geeky this one hurts the 94 overall six foot four right-handed player this one really is tough okay he joined if you didn't watch the game world championship he actually joined the broadcast with matthew savoy and we got to talk to him i got to talk to him uh, a little bit and he was just an awesome kid like he was hilarious he was super down to earth i thought one one of my favorite guys that I had met this entire week, and I met Shane Wright, uh, but Connor Geeky, let me tell you, the Sharks, they're drafting 11th, okay? They're picking 11th. Number nine, I believe, goes to Savoy. Savoy goes to Buffalo. I'm hurt, but I knew that he wasn't really going to fall to 11, I didn't think. And all that was stood in the way of Geeky and the Sharks was Anaheim. They don't go with Connor Geeky, and it's right there. It's right there for the Sharks to take the guy that I would love to take. Regardless, I know that there were some uh, some things about his skating, not being NHL level and whatnot, but he's huge, and he was funny, and I'm, you know, it just would have been nice to be in person at the draft. Anyways, they trade the pick to Arizona. I'm pretty crushed. Arizona then takes Connor Geeky, and I'm going to be a fan of this kid his entire career. Again, it was really fun meeting him, and uh, I think he's going to be a pretty decent player. And then we've got Matthew Savoy, 5'9". I think Buffalo got a really, really good, talented player here to go with some of the bigger guys that they've got in Tage Thompson and Dylan Cousins. It's going to be really fun watching Matthew Savoy's career. Uh, absolutely electric skating as well as uh, a great shot in hockey IQ. Going to be really fun. And I hope Buffalo gets it together soon, being from Southern Ontario. It's always nice when Buffalo, uh, you know, starts doing well. But the card itself, a little bit underwhelming skating stats, but I think that'll change next year, to be honest with you. And then basically perfect in shot, hands, uh, defensively. Can't play center, but body checking 87. This is a pure offensive card then we've got kirby doc for the montreal canadians and again this is another one that just i didn't i didn't really understand again i think that was the three-team trade with the islanders uh, for kirby doc one of their better young players and uh man part of me thinks they were just they're just tanking for bedard and i think that this might be a year where it's just evident that everyone is tanking for bedard um because you know the mcdavid and matthews level of prospect does not come around that often and uh you know montreal good for montreal they get Slavkovsky, great, going to be a great player. They're huge. I think size was an issue for them. Obviously, Zuki, Cole Caulfield, six foot four, Kirby Doc, and Slavkovsky. That's going to be fun to watch. Uh, and, uh, you know, we get a 95 overall Kirby Doc card. Kevin Korchinski, which I believe was a first reach for Chicago a little bit. One of their first four picks in the first round. But nonetheless, looks to be a very, very good left-handed defenseman. Elite edges here. And an all-around decent hut card, to be honest with you. He's got 94 speed, 93, 94 acceleration, 93 speed. Uh, uh, the 96 Kevin Korchinski. Chris Letang getting a huge pop from the crowd when he announced the Pittsburgh Penguins first round pick and getting that massive deal. 34 years of age, uh, 6.4 million. He's locked up. It'll be interesting to see what they do uh, with um, 
with Malkin, but he looks to be a, a lifelong Penguin, although the contract kind of screams like early retirement or hide him on the IR at the end of his career, but we'll see. He's still got a lot of game left in him. He is phenomenal, and this card is actually pretty solid as well. I mean, it's basically perfect 99 across the board with wheels, which I'm going to mess around with a little bit in the summertime for defensemen because I feel like wheels may be overlooked a little bit by defensemen. Just it depends on your play style, but we'll see the 97 overall Chris Letang. Then we've got the 97 overall David Juracek, the six foot three right handed defenseman, looked to be one of the best draft picks in the draft. Gets gold shutdown and elite edges, 93 speed, 92 acceleration, and 99 everything else across the board. He is a great hut card, going to be a great prospect in the NHL, and uh, just an all around uh, a really really good card right here. Then we've got the stunner of the draft, the 98 overall Shane Wright. And again, I'm going to have a vlog that will go over my entire trip from the GWC and the draft, and I will show you how the how the arena reacted. Shane Wright made it evident that he wanted to go first overall, and I kind of thought that was like an ego thing. There was there was interviews where he said that I'm good enough to go first, and it seemed to me like it was important to him. And you know, I, obviously it's important to everyone at that, that stage of the draft, but he really wanted the 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 uh, not the clout, but like the the reward of being first overall in a draft. Doesn't go one Slavkovsky goes, and then. You know, uh, New Jersey kind of stunned. I mean, I it makes sense that they drafted a defenseman because they don't have a lot of defense at all, and they definitely are pretty set on forwards with Hughes and he sure. Uh, but he goes he goes to three, and the Arizona Coyotes, there was a point in the draft where it looked like Shane Wright was going to go from playing in the Bell Center to the College Barn, and then they go Logan Cooley, and Seattle gets an absolute stud at number four, and I cannot wait now. If you watch the draft again, there is a clip of Shane Wright shaking hands with Bettman, and he death stares the Montreal Canadiens for not taking him first. This guy is on a war path. I'm a huge Huge Shane Wright guy now. I can't wait to see his career. I feel like you can't not cheer for him now throughout his career. He looks slighted, and uh, I hope he turns out to be a really good player, and he is going to be fun to watch with Matty Beneers in Seattle. Uh, but, man, what a sequence of events that top five was. Alex Debrinkit goes to the Senators, and the Senators finally starting to make their moves. They've had enough of that rebuild, and they go out and get Alex Debrinkit for the number seven pick, basically, and I believe 39. Great trade, in my opinion. I don't know how that was all that Chicago could get for Debrinkit. Again, I, 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 Chicago fans, please let me know in, in the comments section. I'm not bashing them, but just from an outsider standpoint uh, of the franchise and, and, and a, you know, a fan of the NHL, I don't know why you would get rid of guys that are under 25 that look like studs if you're not blatantly trying to get Connor Bedard or maybe Mitch Cobb. I don't, I'm not sure. But anyways, no, see, or the, the Senators are actually going to look pretty fun next year, and Debrinkit in Ottawa... You know, they might challenge for a wild card spot. I still think they're about a year away, uh, but it's going to be really fun regardless. Then we've got the 99 Yarmir Yager with puck on a string and elite edges. Now, Yager has been one of the more uh, paralyzing cards this year because if you remember back to the very first events of the year, he got a master set item and Yarmir Yager cards are the perfect hut build. Big, uh, you know, usually decent skating and then a great shot early on in the game. He was off one of the worst cards ever. Uh, in Hockey Ultimate Team for the cost and everything like that and the hype. This looks incredible. I did do my due diligence, talk to a, a, a lot of members in the community, uh, and apparently this 99 does not feel the same. It feels like a true 99 for this Yarmir Yager card. So uh, if you're looking to grab him, he is seemed to be a good card. However, it does not appear that there is a easy way to get him in terms of sets or anything like that, which is kind of a letdown. But nonetheless, the 99 Yarmir Yager is back in the game. All right, guys, then we've got our three master sets, uh, first three master sets, and again, the card Hard art is awesome. Again, not hockey related, but just looks phenomenal. You can say what you want about the content and everything like that. There has been a lot of issues with NHL 22. I've made it known that it is one of the worst in my opinion, but the card art has been spectacular. Anyways, the 99 overall Pierre-Luc Dubois, six foot three with unstoppable force, crease crasher, truculence, tape to tape, and off the rush. Uh, he can get up to 99. Everything unstoppable force is a very, very good zone ability. Throw truculence on. He's going to bump anyone off the puck, and you've got a really, really good card here in the 99 Pierre-Luc Dubois. Next up, we've got Jake Gensel. I've never been a super big fan of Jake Gensel, and I don't know why. He's a very good player, but I just, I don't know, I don't know what it is. Again, I I, I apologize. This is a me thing, but he's got make it snappy, big tipper, close quarters, no contest, tape to tape, and puck on a string. A lot of these abilities I'm not a huge fan of, but still at 99, he's an incredible card. There's no way around that, and uh, you can go out and grab the 99 Jake Gensel, and there's multiple ways to make him, which we're going to talk about in just a little bit. And then we've got the Calder Trophy winner, the 99 overall Moritz Sider, who 
who can go and be a true 99 with seeing eye magnetic 1T truculence quick pick and elite edges a phenomenal card they have released studs at right-handed defense over the last few weeks and about a last month and uh this is one of the best right-handed defensemen in the game and uh yeah in my opinion spoiler alert the best one of all of these all right, guys, now we're going to talk about the sets because there is a pretty d dynamic change to sets, and it always happens at the end of the year, and I hope to God they don't just forget about it because we complained about this all year. Finally, we get power-up collectible exchange sets. So they uh, they work a lot like event collectibles. So if you go all the way down to the end here, power-up collectibles, you can trade in a 91 overall and get four power-up collectibles back. Uh, the value is about 11,000 collectibles, or 11,000 per collectible, which is a good value if you go and think about what it was throughout the year which is about twenty five thousand coins uh so right now uh you can go out and get those power-up collectibles and do the trade-in if you want if you're looking for certain upgrading icons if you're looking for upgrading uh x factors to trade in for team of the season things like that uh this is definitely the way to do it what scares me is the timer being limited i i don't know it, it just, yeah, God, EA. Then we've got the collectible sets. Nothing really new here, guys. I will give you guys uh, the quick rundown, though, of the best value. This is, the 93 is actually the best value. You get going for about 4,000 coins per collectible right now. And then outside of that, the 87 trade-in uh, appears to be the next best. Around, anything under 5,000 is obviously the play, but you want to try and make it where it's around four to 4,200 coins. That's really going to change the value if you're trying to make any of these master set players. So now as we move along, you do see here there's some trade-in sets so if you trade in the 97 x factor jay gensel as well as 30 summer of shell collectibles which is obviously going to be quite expensive but if you can get each collectible for 4,000, that's only 120,000 coins it's getting jay gensel up to 97 but if you have them you know this is actually going to be a pretty decent value i don't know if i would go 97 to the 99 that's going to be your decision uh but yeah you can do that now then we've got a power-up collectible trade-in set with the 98 j uh the 98 Gabriel Landis Cog and 16 Power Up Collectibles. And then lastly, we've got the 97 Power Up Collectible version, of the trade in for that X Factor. And again, at 12, uh, at going for about 11,000 coins, you're looking at about 132,000 with the 97 to go up to the 98 X Factor, Jake Gensel. Then we've got the NHL theme team. And when this was released, they did the old whoopsie daisy uh, and released it for way too cheap of a price. Now it's awfully expensive. So, um, here we go. We'll go through every team. We'll, we'll, I'll show you how it works. 30 event collectibles, right? So we just talked about if you can get your collectibles for 4,000 coins, 120,000 coins for this trade-in where you get a random 89 overall player and it's untradeable. At this current price, there's no way that's worth it unless you're trying to shoot your shot, trying to acquire one of the players that you can't because they're just no longer on the market. Every card, I believe, including master sets, is in the player the the pool for this. So um, again, I think that it's a it's a cool value or it's a cool set. The price is absolutely just stupid, and um, you know. Uh, it just I love the ideas the costs are just I, I I will never understand what they're trying to do to the player base but it is what it is guys I I have let my opinions known in the game changer chat for three straight years in terms of pricing and costs and uh no avail so cool addition of the game not worth it at all all right then on to the objectives guys take a look here I'm kind of let down we don't get the free master choice item because this is the last event of the year but nonetheless you get I believe 14 total power up collectibles uh and 10 event collectibles which helps reduce the cost but it's nowhere near getting the free card and uh that's kind of let down at the last event of the year but nonetheless those are the objectives all right guys so that is going to do it for the new content of the last events of the year thank you guys again for watching me all season long i really appreciate it and the content will not stop check me out on twitch twitch.tv slash no sleeves 12 uh, all day every day i'll see you next time have a good one